Oh yeah, baby. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while, but as you can see, we're in a different space. Uh, I essentially moved bays from the bays next door into this bay and it took a while getting everything set up. And then drift days came up and you gotta get the car set up for that, which is actually what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be setting the car back up. I ended up breaking the BMW a little bit. Um, I'm gonna try to fix that today. So yeah, let's go see if it starts. So essentially by breaking the BMW, I mean, it keeps throwing a fuel line whenever I turn the fuel pump on. So I'm assuming those injectors I put in were a little bit too big. And uh, yeah, this is probably one of those cars first actual true cold starts. It's been sitting for like three days. So. Oh. But essentially, I took the M52 regulator. I have a permanent solution for that. I'm getting caps. Don't disregard this for the fuel filter goes on. But um, I have that mounted there. And then I have the fuel lines ran through. And as you can see, I have the pink top injectors in here, which I think is my main problem. So we're going to put the green tops back in and hope it doesn't keep blowing this line. That's why this shielding is off. Hope it doesn't keep blowing the line off of this. It's probably down here somewhere. Oh, that's all covered in fuel. All right. Screw to this problem. I already have all the required tools in the car. So we're gonna put the line back on, try it again. If it pops back off, we're gonna put it back on. Eventually until we can get it to stay on until the car gets running, because it's only an issue on cold start. I'm not entirely sure why this keeps popping off. Uh, I'm hoping it's the injectors making too much fuel pressure and it's hitting the regulator and doing a thing. Tighten the crap out of this. Hope we can get it in the shop and fix it properly. I gotta make another mount for this rail too. When I first put it on, it, uh, when I would turn the fuel pump on, essentially it would pop up injector number six because that's where the fuel comes in. So that was the first injector it hit, meaning it had the most fuel pressure. So I had to build a little bracket for the M52 to the M50 rail or M52 to M50 intake manifold. And it works for now. I mean, it doesn't come off. I've driven an event on it. So let's see if I shoot fuel everywhere. Yeah, that power steering pump's not super happy. I think the line stayed on though. Wow, that's really not happy. May have a stripped interior, but we still got windshield wipers, baby. Oh, uh, Mr. Hoodpin, get out of here. So essentially, my ramp here isn't long enough to get this Johnny in. So we gotta pull the bumper off every time we wanna go in the shop, which isn't super hard. I'm actually surprised this thing hasn't fallen off yet. It's just one screw here that is, definitely has a big enough washer. And then this other perfectly mounted washer that is definitely big enough for the job. And then you give it a little pull. And another little pull, and she's off, just like that. And now we have more than enough clearance. I need to do something about that power steering pump because it's not very happy. It's also out of fluid. And power steering is running up and look at that. Oh, guarantee, oh heck yeah, this should work then. Pullovers, and even with the fender like unbolted and pulled out, it's still uh, did a number on this fender. I had this all like hammered in nice and tucked up real far. And then uh, coming out of the Manji into the infield, it, it, it was just eating this tire. And you can kind of see it's, it's not the happiest tire, but it's fine. It's what we have this sticker here for. People don't see that. Doom, 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 doom. How many times can I take this thing off in a week? Oh, 
Oh, and it really sucks to take off because I had to zip tie it to pass tech. Because it was unsafe. It could rattle off and break things in here. All right, we can kind of reach that now. Yeah, yeah. Let's see on the how much fluid is in there. Ooh, ooh. Oh, man. This it was on my old transmission that I had issues getting into and out of gear with. And uh, let's just say that transmission is now our shop urinal. And I have a new transmission in the car, so we'll see if this is going to do the same with the power steering. I don't know who came up with the design of this bottle, but it sucks to squeeze out because it's like a gel. And you squeeze it really hard and not much comes out. It's really, really not fun. But it is going in. I can see it filling up. Yeah, and they advertise to do this twice, two bottles. Yeah. I think people have like some god forearms or something. So you take the little little nozzle part off. It comes out a lot faster. Just got to be more accurate. But it wouldn't be the first time we've had power steering fluid everywhere on this car. Probably won't be the last too, because I doubt this will work. I'm probably gonna put too much in it. It's gonna go everywhere. But uh, hey, look at that! I used my eyeballs. Pop this Johnny back on. And we'll just kind of set this in there so it has a mass airflow sensor and wants to idle. Yeah, baby. Let's hope we don't pop this fuel line back off. Oh. Yeah, she's a ripper now. That definitely did it. Ooh, made a noise. Oh, I definitely filled her a little bit. Um, there are bubbles there, though, which is good. That means it's doing its thing. Um, so, the car definitely rolled forward. We weren't this close. Yeah. Uh oh. Perfect. Turn that off, turn that off. All right. We will bleed that later as we drive and whatnot. Let's get this fuel line or injectors off and put on the new, aka the old guys. This is the M50 rail. It's got that little baby regulator. Um, these injectors are good. I did all the O-rings and all these new green caps and filters and whatnot. So it should be, should all be in working order. At least they, oh, I didn't plug this one. Oops. Oh, well. Well, yeah. Pop that guy back on. Oh, that just overflowed a lot. <sighs> Man. Stuff is everywhere. Oh, man. Essentially, there's only one screw holding this fuel rail on, other than the injector O-ring seating in the intake manifold. And it's just one little 10 guy. So essentially the bracket to mount the M52 fuel rail to the M50 intake, it's just something like this, something simple. Um, this is just some scrap metal I had laying around the shop and I gotta make another one to mount the front half because I'm running this rail still instead of the M51, but I'm just not running these injectors. I'm running the green ones and yeah, so let's make this and then we'll put the injectors in and see if it messes up anymore. Uh, yeah, I think this is what I used. Yeah. Then I used the end. Perfect. Nice straight cut, as you can see. And then we'll just make one of these. I 
out the Harbor Freight Grinder. Can't find safety glasses, don't need them. Beautiful. And messy. Alright, I got all the injectors swapped over to this rail. So I got all the clips on. Just gotta put it in the car. Got the brackets drying, but we'll get the lines on. I swapped those injectors back in. Car wouldn't start. Had a few lines flipped, no big deal. So did all that, got it running, broke it. That guy I bought that steering column off of, he knows a lot about these ECUs in these cars. And when I told him what was happening with my car, you know, it started on starting fluid, it has spark, it has fuel pressure, like it has everything. Um, all the motor grounds, like chassis grounds and all that are there for everything that would, like, the motor would need, like everything else in the car works. He's not sure why it won't turn on. He was like, it might be the transistors in the ECU for the fuel injectors. And I was like, we could do that. He's like, yeah, we can break those. We can fry them. And I did not know that at the time. I do now. And he was just like, you're probably gonna need an ECU. I was like, all right. So I sucked it up, bought another ECU, 200 bucks, put it in, put it in Thursday. Today is Sunday. And we were supposed to go to H2O down in Maryland. And then we kind of changed our minds when we found out that the impound fee was 1500 bucks, and they were impounding just about anything down there that wasn't stock, even some stock cars. Um, so we were just like, all right, well, we all have the weekend off, we're going to do something. So we hit a meet in Columbus, we were like an hour and a half south, went to Columbus, had a pretty good car scene, uh, stayed the night there in a hotel. And then we woke up in the morning and went to Grand Rapids, Michigan. And our buddy lives up there. And um, got a buddy that lives up there and said we could stay the night with him. Like, All right, sit. See if there's any car meets nearby. There's a car meet in Holland. It's right on Lake Michigan. It's a really cool place. Um, you know, they were sanded and everything, kind of reminded me of like back home. And like, uh, there was a bunch of like stance cars there. And there was a couple kids that were actually like into drifting and they saw our pieces of junk and were looking at our cars versus like the bagged Audis and whatnot that were there, the R32 and you know, all that kind of junk. So pretty cool meat. People like my car and Thomas's car. And, uh, And then we went to a truck stop on the way home. Or no, we stopped to get gas. And I was just like, man, I don't know why. The car was running a little bit funny. But, you know, not enough for me to really, like, worry too much about it. Like, just try to, like, think of things that it could be. You know, the car probably needs spark plugs. Probably needs a fuel filter. I was just, like, looking online. You know, a fuel filter could cause inconsistent, like, in the running. Like, if it's running well or running bad. And um, I was just like, all right, you know, we'll do a fuel filter in the morning. Like, I don't really feel like doing it. And so we ended up going to this truck stop. So after we left the meet, we went to go get gas. And we were going to get gas. I noticed that this ground was completely snapped off of the eyelet connector it had. So for the on the road fix, took a set of pliers, stripped the wire back, wrapped it around this bolt, put it in. Car ran great. When we came out after we got our food, went to start the car, and doing the same thing it did two weeks before. Just put a fresh ECU in it on Thursday, fixed it, just got it running great about an hour and a half before it 
decided to die again. And uh, I wasn't the happiest camper. So we ended up getting it towed. I had AAA tow it. To, we were in Byron County, Michigan, 240 miles from home when it died. And then we had AAA tow it to Coldwater, Michigan. And then I had a buddy tow it from Coldwater back here to Lima. And at this point, I'm ready to pull it apart for the winter. That's why the front end is off of it. I was ready to pull it apart when the first ECU went, but something in me was just like, hey, like, you have the money, you can fix this, you can drive it a little bit more, just fill a couple more events to drive this season. And realistically, I could, I could fix it again. It's just, I'm tired of driving around and throwing together a car. So, we're gonna pull it apart for the winter. Got a lot of big plans for this thing. And uh, yeah, next video will probably be pulling this motor, pulling the wiring harness, and sending it out to that guy who knows a lot at the ECU to help me out, help me diagnose it. And, um, He's going to slow it down, make sure there's no shorts or anything anywhere that could be calling it to keep prying those transistors, which I'm assuming that's what it's doing. I still don't know for sure. I have to crack an ECU open, but we'll see. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.